Now, books do influence our lives, but tell us about the books that have helped you in your journey of faith, please. Uh, it's true, books do influence us in a large way, particularly when the Lord inspires us to read books. And I have been an avid reader. For sure. Um, because there's always something on my mind that I'm pushed towards ever since I was a, a young man. And a couple of books that have made a big impression upon me. The first one was The Normal Christian Life by Watchman Nee. That really made a big impression upon me, how we reckon ourselves dead to sin and alive to God. And he has such a lovely, simple way of explaining things. He says, like, if somebody gives you some change from the shop you reckon it up and get the right amount he says that's what you have to do you have to reckon up how your life was and how it is now it's a solid thing you are reconciled to god now where formerly you weren't that's the normal christian life and it made such sense to me and it really kind of penetrated my heart and it made a big impression on me. The second book was also a Watchman Nee book called Release of the Spirit. That made a, a quite a big dent in my life because I still think of it now and it's part of my prayers that I pray every so often. It's about release of the spirit from within these jars of clay. So the jar of clay needs to be broken like the alabaster box was broken. Okay. Can and you expand a bit more on that for us? Yeah. Well, watch me. He, he says, uh, he pushes the point how important it is to be broken. And that's the one thing that God is trying to do with us our whole lives, to break us, because we've got these stiff necks, these tough exteriors. We need to be broken and let the light shine out. Maybe at first, when we first become a Christian, we're not very broken and we have just a little crack. And some people think, well, he's hardly changed at all. I can't. But you see just a little bit of light coming from him, from within. But then maybe the next time you see him in six months' time, he's broken some more, and you can see more light come in, the treasure within the uh, jars of clay, until the light, the treasure shines out, or the perfume as it was in the alabaster box yeah. that shines out. Um, and, and everybody in the room could tell the, the fragrance was, was there. So Watchman Nee in Release of the Spirit, he hammers home this point, throughout the whole book, and that made a big impression. How important it is to be humble. It's important to God because the proud, he knows from afar, but those who are humble, he draws into his presence. So we come like a child. It's so important that we do that. Um, so that that was Watchman Nee's book that made such a massive impression on me and we don't we think yeah i know about humility you know and we think that because we read it a lot in the scriptures uh, but how do we really apply it to ourselves um the we we have to come into line with the lord jesus take my yoke upon you for i am lowly of heart and that's really important. The Apostle Paul says, no one should think of himself more highly than he ought. And we have a tendency to think of ourselves more highly than we ought. So we're thankful when God gives us opportunities to be humble. I know sometimes it can seem like it's in, uh, embarrassing or awkward. And yet we should really thank God for those times and say, Lord, Thank you that you've given me an opportunity to be humble and to accept these circumstances that have come into my life. I accept them 
and it helped me to move forward with meekness and humility. And that was that was release of the spirit by Watchman Nee. So that made a big impression on me. Now, Paul, it's obvious that there are times when you have felt broken um, by the Lord. And some people might think, oh, that's a bit harsh from the Lord or, you know. But from that, do you did you feel a healing from it? I think you feel life from it because this world, although it gives us biological life, it doesn't give us the life of God. We don't get that from this world. So when we move into that position of humility before God, then we receive the life of God into our own hearts more easily. And we feel that life pulsating through us, the love of God it pushes away all worldly ambition and the pride of life and the, the, the desire to do well and get on. The Bible says make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. Yeah. So th- that's that's the life of God. Jesus said to the rich and ruler, okay, one thing you lack, go and sell everything you have and come and follow me. But he couldn't do it. No. This world had got a, such a stranglehold on him. And Jesus said how hard it is for the, those who are rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. So, yes. y- yeah, we, we certainly feel the life of God pulsating through us when we are broken. But it's not always easy to be humble, is it? It's like that song, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard to be humble, that country <laughs> song, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. I, mean, I, I know. How, how do you think then we get to that place of being humble? Brokenness. That's what Watchman Nee says. We have to be broken before the Lord. And we we can't just do it, you know, as if we can reach that stage by our own logical progression somehow, if we just think about it long enough. No, it's a calling out to the Lord. Lord, help me to let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me because naturally i don't have it so it's the lord who comes to us and he will maybe set circumstances that we don't like to help us in that pursuit of being broken before god and it, it, it works it works if we receive it and we grow by it as well Because this is the kingdom of heaven. It's diametrically opposed to the kingdom of this world. It's the total opposite. People want to be great in this world. You want, you want, you know, be a legend in your own lunchtime. (laughs) (laughs) But it's not like that in heaven. Jesus says the greatest among you is a servant. And, And that's how the kingdom of God works. So we all have to take our place, stay in your lane. Don't try and take somebody else's position. What has God got for you? Find out. Walk in it. You know, th- this This is where God wants you. This is the, the place God wants you. Walk in that place. Yeah. Good points. And that book was called again, Release of the Spirit. Of the Spirit, yeah. By Watchmen. Got, yeah. yeah. There's been a, a whole heap of other books as well. But those two do stick out. And have you got one more, you say? Well, yeah, I've got one more. Yeah, sure. Um, well, you could choose any of the C.S. Lewis books. Yeah. Um, but probably the most well-known one is Mere Christianity, which I've I've read and reread because that is another – Light Watchman Nee's book, The Normal Christian Life – Get down to basics. Don't try and make things too clever. Try and get into the, the footsteps of the Lord. Uh, this is the way. Walk in it. You'll hear a, a voice behind you saying, this is the way. And that these simple books help us to do that. Get in line. We follow Christ. Get in Christ's footsteps and and stay there. And, and walk steadily and truly. And mere Christianity is like the title said, it just goes through what is Christianity? It's this. Mm-hmm. And there are there are a couple of great chapters. There's one chapter called The Great Sin. 
And the great sin is pride, Ooh. pride, which yes. we all tend to have. Don't talk to me like that. Don't you know who I am? Mm. That kind of attitude. Yes. Whereas if if we get hurt, Jesus said, turn the other cheek, go the extra mile. If somebody takes your coat, give them your jacket as well. Don't try and keep up with the Joneses. Let the Joneses do what they want. You follow me. And, you know, Peter said, what about John? And Jesus says, what's that to do with you, Peter? You follow me. And that's the kingdom of heaven. So mere Christianity kind of points these simple points out. Don't try and make it too clever. Don't get involved in church politics and all that stuff. Watch out for doctrinal disputes, doubtful disputations. Mm -hmm. All of those things don't come from the Lord. They don't come from the Holy Spirit. We need to listen each day to the still, small voice. I think you've really summed up fantastically. I really do. So, Paul, that's three good books there. When you jump into a book, so to speak, because I know you're an avid reader, would you do you go with the attitude of thinking God's going to speak to me through that book? Not initially. When I start reading it, though, I quickly realise that the Lord is speaking. If they're a good spiritual book that uh, is inspired in some way by the Holy Spirit, the Lord will speak. And I found that there's lots of books I read. And I like reading some of the early church writers who wrote not long after the, the Lord left this earth. Um, you know, Augustine, he's interesting. Justin Martyr's interesting. Um, all of these have some good points to make. And yeah. and so it, it's good. And, and also um, the, the medieval writers as well like Thomas Akempis, The Imitation of Christ, that's a good book, The Practice of the Presence of God, Brother Lawrence. All these are interesting books. Um, and moving a bit closer up to today, we've got, well, in the 1900s, you've got, or 1800s, you've got um, people like um, the Scottish preacher, George MacDonald, I've read his writings, and he also has that incisive um, grasp of scripture and when I read his words I go oh yeah I can see that and and also uh, G.K. Chesterton um, he's well known for the Father Brown books but he, <laughs> but he had a, a faith at a time when a lot of people were turning from faith and so he would write these stories about people like Father Brown who was a detective and yet he would integrate so much spiritual truth into those stories yeah now paul i know that you have read a book called julian of norwich and i know that you've read this book a few times because i remember when you first read it it really did something for you and so you reread it and you felt that you were learning even more things from it that the lord was talking to you about a very unusual story julian of norwich could you just Give us some insight into that book, please. Julian of Norwich was a lady, although she took on a man's name, but she was the first lady in England to write a proper book. And right. purely on a literary scale, she's um, lauded as being one of the great writers of of that era, which was a, a long time ago, um, hundreds of years ago. And she was an anchorite. That means she stayed in a little room in attached to a church and she never left it. She wow. just stayed there and she would pray and write. She had a little window. People would go and ask her questions because they thought she was a spiritual lady. And there was another window on the other side, I think, and people would give her uh, communion from the church and she could listen to the preacher and the reading of the scriptures there. And her book is quite amazing, yes. 
all yeah. shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. That's the line most people know from her book. Amazing. But there's a lot more in it as well. And when you when you read these kind of books from the medieval era, it's interesting to remember that they didn't have access to the scriptures like we do. So there's not a lot of scripture in there, although there is some, but they didn't have copies of the scriptures themselves. They only knew the scriptures from what would, they would hear in the Sunday services. But God spoke to Julian of Norwich in a special way, and you can sense the mm. spirit of the Lord as you read the book. Wow. And, um, yeah, that and I, I know you and I went to the room where she stayed, didn't we? There's we still did. a bit of it left. <laughs> and we sat there for a while, um, but we wouldn't want to stay there too long. But it was interesting to, just to sit there. Yeah. And, and 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 sit where she sat. Yeah. So some people might be thinking, like I did, how did she get fed? So they would have given food to her through the window. Yes, and took took any you know waste products out as yeah. well. Same way. Yeah. Yeah, but it is an incredible story how the Lord did speak to her in different ways. Yes, it is. Yeah, we don't do that kind of thing these days. No. You know. But um, that's the way they did it then. So, you know, we accept it. They did it that way. We have our spiritual life another way. But we can still learn from that period. Yeah. Paul, thank you. It's been inspiring because I can see that these books have inspired you and done something for you. So they may be good books for all of us to delve into. Thank you.